wait for the attack as. You bring it with you. Thank you. Yes. So now, you're no longer alone against this axe of the attacker. Momentarily, yes. Why did you not join your father and come at him from behind? Because he's been ignoring you up until that time. I was too scared. I don't. Hey you and welcome. My name is Mike and in this little video, we're going to do something that's never been done before on this channel. We're covering a case from South Africa. Lekabre. I'll try and keep my South African impressions to a minimum, which uh which more or less just consists of District 9. It's the sweetie man coming. Oh, look at this tree. Fuck. This is the case of the Van Breda family murders, when Tree, had to be Tree, members of one family were murdered with an axe. Thank you so much to Blade Runner 4902 for the suggestion. This happened in 2015, and after a lengthy investigation, the case didn't uh, just end there. So, the who, what, why, where, when. The Van Bredas were a close-knit family, living near the beautiful South African vineyards of Stellenbosch. The patriarch of the family, Martin Van Breda, was the managing director of Engel & Volkers, a real estate company in Australia, and he was an exceptional businessman. He was married to his wife, Teresa, and they had three children, 22-year-old Rudy, 20-year-old Henry, and 16-year-old daughter, Marley. They were a loving family no enemies. In January 2014, they had moved back to South Africa from Australia, where the children had gone to school in Melbourne, and youngest son Henry was studying physics at Melbourne University. Leading up to this vicious attack, they seemed like a grand, wealthy old family living in a big, security-heavy estate. Some reported that young Henry, who was on a gap year from university, had developed a tick addiction. Tick is kind of like meth and it was also reported that Henry had spent time at a prominent and expensive drug rehab facility for his addiction. And so this more or less brings us up to the night of uh, what happened. On January 27, 2015, Henry Van Breda made this call. What is Steven, what is your emergency? I am, um, yeah. I need an ambulance, lots of... Um, you need an ambulance? Yes, please. What's your name, sir? Uh, Henry Van Breda. Can you please just send an ambulance, or more than one ambulance, to dissolve the Wineland in Stellenbosch? And you the patient? No, no. My family is... Someone attacked my family. Hey? Someone has attacked my family in my house. <laughs> okay, so you need the police, or the well, ambulance? And an ambulance, please, yes. Now, who is um, injured? My, I think everyone. Everyone in your house? Everyone, four people, yes. What are the injuries? Um, head injuries, I look... <laughs> are they conscious? I, d I don't think so, my sister's moving, but that's it. Suspects still on scene, these, sir? Sorry? Are there any suspects on scene? Uh, no, no, they ran away. With what were they attacked? I, um, a, an, an axe. I, it, it was, I, I, I think I blacked out and I've just woken up. Police quickly arrived on the scene and they found Martin, Teresa and Rudy murdered by an axe. And someone wielding that axe. Daughter Marley was in critical condition having sustained a shitload of head wounds and was rushed to intensive care while Henry, he was like Randy, he had suffered a few cuts but um, you know, he seemed, he was alright. An axe and a knife were found at the scene, and during the investigation when police spoke to the housekeeper, Precious Mungungani, it was determined both weapons had come from the house itself, the axe being stored on a shelf in the pantry. There were also no signs of forced entry. The scene is becoming pretty clear, huh? Henry, when he was found by police, was wearing sweatshorts and white socks that were absolutely drenched in blood. The blood of his parents and brother. A paramedic who arrived at the scene said it was the worst thing he'd seen in his 39-year career. He said the blood 
was flowing down the stairs like a waterfall. It was absolutely horrific. Martin died of at least five axe blows to his head and one to his neck. Teresa was struck at least three times. Rudy was hacked to death with at least four axe wounds to his head. Marley had at least four blows to the head and her jugular artery was cut. Initially, what occurred seemed to be, well, an absolute nightmare, but um, South Africa has a relatively high crime rate, so somebody breaking in and doing this, it seemed plausible to some extent, but nothing was stolen. Dissolve the golf estate in the Cape Winelands district, the home of upmarket residences and plush golf courses. But on Tuesday morning, it was the scene of a bloodbath. Businessman Martin van Breda, his wife Teresa and son Rudy found dead. It's believed they were bludgeoned with an axe. Police won't divulge the whereabouts of the van Breda's 20-year-old son Henry who was present at the time of the attack. Their 16-year-old daughter Marley is currently fighting for her life after being transferred to the Vergelegen Mediclinic in Somerset West. The teen is not being allowed any visitors at this stage. Residents of the Dizalzo Golf Estate are still shocked at the gruesome murders on this generally quiet premises. Security at the multi-million rand estate is extremely tight, raising questions around whether this could have been an inside job. But police won't be drawn, saying the murders are currently being investigated and no arrests have yet been made. After the initial investigation, Henry went to live with an uncle, while Marley was sent to another family member. Police had their suspicions and wanted them away from each other. Another thing to note that's pretty important is that, um, you know, after the attack, Marley had intense head injuries. She had basically been fucked with an axe. And, uh, you know, she had to have a lot of surgery, a lot of medical treatment. And so, get this, she was later diagnosed with retrograde amnesia and had no recollection of anything uh, around the time of the event. As the investigation was ongoing, the media got a hold of Henry's tick addiction. He was totally pleading innocent, saying, you know, it was a black guy wearing a mask and gloves and everything broke in in the middle of the night and just slaughtered his family. And so, the police began to think of a motive. Henry's family was very wealthy, and he had a pretty good allowance, which, when his parents found out about his addiction and sent him to rehab, cut him off. Newspapers even tracked down his dealer, who identified Henry as a regular customer. So kind of from the very get-go, Henry's masked black guy intruder was not believable. It would be over a year and a half before Henry was arrested on June 13th, 2016. On June 14th, Henry appeared in court, facing three charges of murder and one of attempted murder, and also obstruction of justice. Bail was set at a hundred thousand rand, which is, what the fuck, six thousand seven hundred dollars. Maybe that's a lot in South Africa. Henry paid up and was released under the conditions that he report to his local police station regularly and not leave the Western Cape province. In September that same year, Henry and his girlfriend, Danielle Van Rensburg, were arrested for possession of the devil's lettuce. The trial for the axe murders began in April 2017. Henry said, I'm not guilty. He's pleaded not guilty to all five charges against him, three of murder. That's for murdering his brother, his mother, his father, attempting to murder his sister Marley, uh, who survived her injuries and now has retrograde amnesia, we're told, and then uh, attempting to obstruct justice by misleading the police. What's very interesting, Cathy, is he did offer a plea explanation, which was read out by his lawyer uh, shortly after he said, whispered not guilty uh, to uh, all the charges that were put for him, and his uh, version in summary is that of a masked, a balaclava clad, axe wielding intruder uh, who came into the family home shortly after they'd watched Star Wars 2 and had a, a, a lovely dinner, a little bit of wine, uh, a very happy family occasion. He says it was. Henry would say that during the early morning of uh, January 27th, when he was taking a dump, he heard strange banging noises coming from somewhere in the house. He then saw a black intruder wearing gloves, dark clothes and a balaclava. He shouted for help and his father came in and accosted the attacker. Henry said that there might have been at least two attackers and he suffered minor injuries while wrestling with one, and he then lost consciousness. 
as far as you can remember and what you observed that night, in what manner did the attacker execute the attack on your brother? Can you please demonstrate? As far as I could see, when the lights switched on, the attacker was facing. Looks like we're standing in between our two beds, um, with Rudy lying on his bed here. Um, in the situation with the, with the attack is facing this way, I'm behind him, and um, he was swinging the axe down. And then the prosecution revealed a few things. You see, the night of the attack, Henry called his then girlfriend, Bianca, at 4.24 a.m. She didn't answer, and he then searched online for local emergency numbers. It actually seems that there are a confusing amount of emergency numbers in South Africa. Then, almost three hours later, he finally called the emergency services. He must have been Googling for ages. It was argued that Henry delayed the call because he wanted his family to bleed to death, and presumably, he thought Marley was a goner too, though Henry would say it was because he had collapsed after the attack, and then had a calming smoke before ringing up. If I thought that I had the capacity to physically help them at that point, I would have done so, but I didn't. You never thought of the possibility of consoling them in their death, in their dying death. <laughs> Make it comfortable. Yeah, I suppose. Tell um, me. I suppose. Um, no, I didn't think that I could actually help them. I thought that what I was doing was the most help that I could do. Though Marley's boyfriend, who testified at trial, said they had all the emergency numbers taped to the fridge. Though, uh, Marley's boyfriend, who, well, ex-boyfriend, um, at the time of the trial, he had a bit of a awkward moment when he had to explain a WhatsApp message he had sent the week before the attack, in which he threatened to murder her entire family, so... The police investigation also discovered that it is believed that after the commission of the crimes, the accused, Henry, tampered with the crime scene, inflicting injuries to his person and supplied false information to the police in order to mislead police as to the true identity of the perpetrator. A neighbour living a few hundred metres from the Van Berdaas home told the court during the trial that she heard what sounded like loud, arguing voices late that evening. When asked why someone would break in and murder a family, ignoring the plethora of valuables inside this multi-million dollar home, Henry had no answer. He didn't have one either for why there were no signs of forced entry, or why he alone had only suffered superficial lacerations. The security experts at the trial all said that not even Houdini himself could have broken into the Van Berdaas home. It was that well secured, with motion detectors, an alarm system, 24-hour guard patrol, access controlled gates, and an electric fence. Experts who analyzed the bodies testified that the blows came from one attacker, who used the same amount of force on each victim. Of all the victims, Marley had put up the greatest fight. Unlike her mother and brother, who had minor defensive wounds, which may mean they were asleep shortly before the attack, Marley perhaps saw Henry coming and tried to fight him off. Her father, Martin, had deep wounds on his back. This may be being an indication that he had used his own body to try and shield Rudy from his axe-wielding brother, believing, perhaps, that his son wouldn't attack him. But he did. Henry was found guilty on all counts. After considering all the evidence, the result is inescapable. As a family man, it's difficult for me to say so. It is the only possible inference. In the, in the, in the premises, Count 1, the murder of Rudy van Breda, the accused is found guilty. Count 2, the murder of Martin van Breda, the accused is found guilty. Count 3, the murder of Theresa van Breda, the accused is found guilty. 
Count four, the attempted murder of Marty van Britta, the accused is found guilty. Count five, defeating or obstructing the administration of justice, the accused is found guilty. That is the unanimous decision of this court. In June 2018, Henry von Breda was sentenced to three life terms for the murders of his mother, father, and brother, 15 years for attempted murder on his sister, and a further 12 months for obstruction of justice. You have committed crimes with a degree of unbridled violence. The violence directed against your own family, killing three and, and causing serious harm to the fourth. The weapon used against the deceased and the injured was an axe. With the victims unarmed and defenseless. It was a cold-blooded murder. The violence was excessive and gratuitous. It was intended to cause maximum harm. We have no explanation for what you did. You have displayed no remorse. We have heard extensive evidence of the consequences of your conduct, the cruel consequences. Yet we have no explanation from you. No substantial and compelling circumstances have been placed before us. They appear to be none. And I say this with some regret, although you are relatively young, what is the severest possible penalty? Society expects no less. The crimes aren't such a result. In the result, on count one, the murder of Rudy van Breda, you were sentenced to life imprisonment. On count two, the murder of Martin van Breda, you were sentenced to life imprisonment. On count three, the murder of Theresa van Breda, you were sentenced to life imprisonment. For the attempted murder of Mali van Breda, you are sentenced to 15 years in prison. A few months later, his appeal was dismissed. It would also be dismissed two further times. The motive for the murders has uh, severally been uncovered. Henry still, to this day, pleads innocence and his girlfriend and a social worker and a couple of other people genuinely believe that he didn't do it. Henry van Breda didn't do it. That's according to a social worker who counseled the triple axe murderer prior to his conviction and sentence. For me, it, it, it was really difficult to, to really bring forward in a way any reasons that would, that would say, well, this is possibly what the court could consider in terms of what drove and what motivated his behavior at that point in time. As much as he has been found guilty that as a professional person, for me, it's very difficult to actually really grasp that, that he was the one that has, has done that. I mean, it could have been if he did it, which I probably think he did, uh, because his parents had cut off his addiction money, maybe to inherit his family's multi million dollar estate, they were worth about 17 million dollars. But whatever the case, it was absolutely shocking and horrific. And as the victim, his sister Marley, has no recollection of that night because of the serious injuries she incurred, it does leave a giant question mark on what happened. Though I think we can give a pretty good guess. Thank you so, so much for watching. I really, really appreciate it. Uh, if you'd like to watch some more of my videos, please work away and I will see you, as always, real soon in the next video. Thanks again, take care of yourselves. Mike out.